One of the best ways to reduce your household bills is to produce your own electricity. But honestly, solar systems can seem intimidatingly expensive and awfully complicated. Well, today we're going to take that complexity away and show you how to get going on a budget. Hello, welcome to English Country Life. Welcome to the cottage on, frankly, a disappointing spring day. My name's Hugh, and together with the fabulous Fiona, who's womaning the camera today, we live here in a small holding in rural Lincolnshire. And trying to be self-sufficient means trying to reduce our bills. We've done programs in the past about how we cook and heat with wood. We've done programs on how we actually manage our water to be independent from mains water. And today we want to talk to you a bit about electricity and particularly about solar power. It's a subject that I think is going to become increasingly important in the future as a lot of the fossil fuels become harder and harder to obtain and therefore more and more expensive. And I think it's something that is good for all of us to at least dip a toe into and understand. And you don't have to go the whole hog with your entire cottage covered in solar panels and everything run that way. You can begin gently and cheaply and move on. But it can be this terribly, terribly confusing subject. So what I want to do today in the first of this new series is just break down the complexity, show you the basic components of a solar system, explain why they're necessary and how they go together. Right, first thing, first, let's just understand what solar panel is. This is an old one of mine and it's designed for backpacking use actually. So you can hang it off your pack and walk around during the day with your pack on when you're backpacking or camping and it will charge up your phone or any other device you want it to do. And if you look at it closely you'll see it's made up of a grid because there's lots of little cells within it and each of those cells is a thing called a diode and a diode is just a one-way valve that only allows electricity to flow in a single direction. Electricity is the movement of charged particles and these charged particles have an amount of energy and they want to move around. How the solar panel works is it absorbs energy from the sun which adds energy to those charged particles which makes them want to flow. Because each of the cells is a diode they can only flow in one direction and that creates a flow of electricity. It's actually a really simple way of generating electricity without actually lots of complicated things. Right, for the next bit we need a little bit of electrical theory, but stay with me, I promise it's super simple. Here's a visual aid, it's a squirty bottle. We've got to look at current versus voltage versus power. Current is the stuff that's flowing, the water. There we go, that's some current. Voltage is how hard we're moving it. So that's low voltage, that's high voltage. Power is the total of the water that's flown. So it's basically voltage times current, which gives you the complete amount of water that moves in a second. That's it. So how does this solar panel work then? Well, on this panel, the cells are put together in a certain way to produce five volts of electricity, which is conveniently the amount that's needed for a USB lead. So what I can do is plug one end of a USB lead into the panel, the other end into my phone, and if there's enough sunshine, it will produce current and charge my phone. And the sunnier it is, up to a limit, the more current it produces and the faster it charges my phone. So this is a brilliant bit of kit for backpacking. Strap it to your backpack and it charges up your phone as you walk around. I also want to have that facility in a domestic setting, but it's a bit less convenient. I suppose I could create some kind of shoulder strap for it and wear it on the back, but it doesn't work terribly well. And as long as they make these leads, you know, I'm not going to want to leave that in one place and have a long lead to my phone. I want to use my phone during the day, charge it up at night when I'm asleep. But at night it's dark and that means your solar panel doesn't work. So the better bet for a domestic setting is to use the panel to charge some sort of battery. And this is one of those power bank things. It also charges up from USB. And if I use the panel to charge the battery, then at night what I can do is use the battery to charge my phone. And that way it's actually a much more convenient setup for me. That backpacking solar panel is a fantastic bit of kit, but in its domestic setting, sometimes I want to do jobs that take a bit more power. For example, I might want to run an electric fence. Now that needs a 12 volt battery and is probably going to require a bigger solar panel in order to feed that additional power requirements. Can I 
put the wires from this solar panel to that battery, like we did with my mobile phone to the backpacking panel? Well, ideally, no. My phone knows when it's charged and it won't accept more electricity than that. And the same is true of that power bank that I showed you that I could charge during the day. These kind of simple 12 volt batteries don't know when they're full. Let's look at what happens when you try and overfill something. We've got a bigger panel, so we're gonna get more electricity. And this, as I'm sure you recognize, is a battery. So what we're gonna do is put our battery so that it charges up from our electricity. And of course, to start with, that's absolutely fine. And our battery starts to grow and fill and we can use that electricity later. But the trouble is, if we just keep pumping more and more and more and more water into that, eventually we're gonna destroy the battery. So how do I prevent my battery ending up like that glove? Well, I wanna prevent this panel pushing too much electricity into it more than it can safely store. And the way I do that is with a charge controller. Now, this didn't matter with my mobile phone with the portable panel. It didn't matter with the power bank because they've got built-in charge controllers. But a simple battery doesn't. And if I connect the panel to the charge controller and the charge controller to the battery, it will prevent that battery being overcharged. It has two other very useful features. One of them is on a perfect day when the sun is bright and there's no cloud like today and it's correctly aligned, this panel can produce up to 20 volts. But this is a 12 volt battery. And the charge controller can correct mismatches in voltage between your panels and your storage. And as your system gets bigger, that can be incredibly important. But even in a small system like this, it matters. The third thing is, if I connect a load directly to my battery, what that can do is damage the battery by over-discharging the battery, taking more from the battery than is good for it. What the charge controller can do if you connect the load to the charge controller is it can prevent whatever is using the power from the battery from draining the battery too far and causing damage. So charge controllers, correct voltage mismatch, they prevent overcharging and they prevent over discharging. So we've got then a fully charged battery. Now as I say, it's sensible to run the load through the charge controller, whatever's drawing power from the battery, in order to avoid over-discharging the battery. But just for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna attach them directly. What's the best way of getting power out of your 12 volt battery? Well, the best way I know is one of these. This is the same 12 volt socket, what we used to call cigar lighter sockets, that go in your car. But this one has got a couple of clips on the end, which means that we can just clip it onto the terminals of the battery. Now, if I remove those clips, I could obviously just put those two wires into the charge controller and the effect is the same thing. And then anything I can run in my car from the 12 volt socket, I can run here. For example, I can plug in one of those and that is a USB converter and I can charge anything that runs on USB, my phone, my tablet, etc. But there's a better thing. And that is one of these. This is a device called an inverter. And what an inverter does when you plug it in to your 12 volt supply is it takes the 12 volt direct current from the battery, turns it into 230 volt alternating current that your domestic supply uses. So you can take a three pin plug, plug it into your inverter and the device will work. Now, there are restrictions. Obviously, your battery can only supply so much power and the inverter is only rated for a certain amount of drain. But with this inverter, I can happily run things like lights, I can run laptops, I can run all that sort of stuff. With a bigger setup, you can run anything you like. You know, if you've got enough battery power, big enough inverter, you can run anything from a washing machine to your whole house. So the possibilities of solar are endless and you don't need to start with a whole house. You can start with something really small, really cheap, just like this. Honestly, those four components are the guts of a solar system. Panels to generate power, batteries to store something in, can be the internal battery on your phone, some form of charge controller to manage the voltage between the two to avoid overcharge or over discharge. And again, devices can have those built in, your phone certainly would. And then some way of getting the power out in the format that you want it. Doesn't have to be expensive, it doesn't have to be complicated. This panel, 
is set up, for example, to recharge a single 12 volt battery for an electric fence. You can have solar powered sheds where you've got lights and you know your radio works and all the rest of it without having to run extensions out from your domestic supply. You can have solar powered security lighting and these things don't have to be an all or nothing. You know, you can start really small, you can build it yourself, you can keep your costs down. Solar power is honestly now in the realms of all of us if we choose to do it. There's a lot more to talk about on the subject. We talk about how to scale it, how to install it, how to get the right components. And if you're interested, please tell us in the comments and we'll make more of this type of video. We've actually done this because it came from the water video. Somebody wanted to know how we run our pumps on solar panel, which we do. We also run chainsaws on solar panel. And again, if you're interested in that type of thing, let us know. And we'll make those kind of videos for you. If you want to see them and everything else we do, tap on subscribe down there and hit the bell next to it. It's a free service, but you get to hear it every time we upload a new video. If you've enjoyed today, we really appreciate a thumbs up while you're down there. But for today, thanks for watching. Come back and see us soon. Take care.